In chapter two, we developed all the tools we need for uh, computing the differential and the derivative of uh, various algebraic functions and transcendental functions. Um, always in the back of our mind, remembering that the derivative, by its definition, is um, can be thought of as the slope of the curve at any given point, as well as the instantaneous rate of change of a function. And it's that second um, uh, interpretation of the derivative that we will use predominantly here in related rates. So in general, a related rate problem, uh, we're given the uh, rate of change of some quantity and we're asked to find the rate of change of another. Um, and such problems typically will use uh, implicit differentiation as the calculus tool for solving the problem. Of course, it'll uh, require us to use uh, many other ideas from geometry and algebra to set up the problem, but implicit differentiation will be the calculus tool that typically um, uh, saw, will be the tool we use to solve the problem. Now, um, in the previous video, um, we uh, talked about a mnemonic that uh, um, that I use whenever approaching a, a word problem and uh, using the mnemonic words, which stands for wonder, organize, relate, determine, and solve. Now, wonder itself um, means uh, to wonder about the problem. Um, and uh, I use another mnemonic, uh, cube, to guide me in that wonder. And, and cube stands for circle, in which I circle key numbers and variables. U for underline, I will um, underline the question that's being asked. Uh, B for box, in which I box any uh, math action words. And finally, eliminate, in which I eliminate any extraneous information that, that may be in the problem. Uh, and then I'll organize uh, uh, my thoughts using diagrams um, and assigning variables to um, the, the various quantities in the problem. Uh, I'll relate uh, the variables and values via equations. I then determine an approach uh, to use to try and solve the problem. Uh, and finally, I will solve using that approach and, um, and check my answer. Um, and, and of course, uh, the determine and solve may be a uh, trial and error. Uh, oftentimes there can be multiple ways to approach a problem. It's not clear from the onset which will um, lead to an answer, a correct answer. So that's why it's important once you solve using that method um, that the answer is checked. Do the values make sense? Um, uh, is there another way I could, can I double check and confirm that I have the right answer? So, um, we could sit here and talk abstractly about uh, uh, related rate problem problems, but it really makes more sense to um, just jump in and, and look at an example. So the um, first problem we look at will be this question in which we're told a point moves along a curve y equals square root of x in such a way that the y value is increasing at a rate of two meters per second. And the question here is at what rate is the x value changing when x equals four? So again, the, the first step is to wonder. So I circle any um, um, numbers and variables. So, uh, here is a whole bunch of variables. So y equals square root of x. Um, here is the y value. <laughs> um, uh, here is a number, two meters per second. Um, another variable, x and x equals four. So these are our, um, uh, um, our math numbers and, and variables. Um, let's underline the question uh, so the question is quite clear. At what rate is the x value changing when x equals 4? There's our question. Um, and then we'll box any math action words. Well, this one actually gives us equations. So 
uh, these are clearly some actions y equals square root of x that's a mathematical relationship um, and of course I want to know uh, here's another math action x equals 4 um, some other though is that it's increasing at a rate this is a derivative right increasing at a rate so that tells us that we've got a derivative going on and then at what rate again that's a derivative so we've got that and um, there doesn't seem to be any extraneous information here it's all uh, very concise so now we're going to organize our thoughts using diagrams well the first should be I mean let's just draw the picture why the graph of y equals square root of x so um, drawing its graph y equals the square root of x its curve looks something like this so that would be y equals uh, y equals square root of x and um, we um, so I've written that down as well and we want to know uh, what is the uh, so we're told the y value is increasing at a rate of two meters so we can relate that that dy is increasing at a rate of two meters per second so I know its underlying variable uh, it's a function of time so dy dt is equal to two and I'll go ahead and write our units so that we can check units at the end so dy dt is equal to 2 and then we're asked in the question what rate is x value changing when x equals 4 and this is going to be with respect to time so the question here is what is dx dt equal to and it's going to evaluation so when x equals 4 so we're going to evaluate this when x equals 4 and it's asking what is that equal to and if you wanted to even further we could put on on the graph here maybe here is 4 and this here would be the point 4 and if we put 4 into the function the output would be 2 because the square root of 4 is 2 so now I've organized all, uh, all the data, all the information that's in here. Notice I've got everything that I've circled and squared, even the underlined. Uh, I've got everything in place. I've, got, I've collected all my information. And we need to now uh, relate all our variables. Well, in this problem, we already have a relationship, right? It was given to us. Uh, oftentimes, we'll have to discover it. But um, so now we will say that um, our underlying relationship is that y is equal to, and um, I'm going to write as x to the 1 half. Uh, so just because I know a priori, I'm going to take derivatives here. I'd rather think of this as a power rule. Okay, so that's my, uh, my underlying relationship. Here's the problem I want to ask. What is dx dt? Uh, and I know that dy dt is, is equal to the constant 2. Uh, so this is constant all the time. And so what is my approach? Well, as I said earlier, these related rates problems, uh, implicit differentiation is our uh, um, go-to uh, problem. And, and so since these are all related relates problems, that's going to be our approach. Now, uh, later on when we have different problems, like uh, we're going to optimize things and other uh, uh, approaches, then it won't be clear. We have to, we'll have to determine what are we trying to answer. But in this, because I know it's a related problem, I'm going to use my approach will be implicit uh, differentiation. So my, uh, my approach is implicit differentiation. Right, so this is what I'm going to use to solve the problem. So let's get to work then. So um, I've got this relationship, dy or y is equal to x to the 1 half. So I could differentiate 
both sides. This tells me that dy is equal to d of the function x to the 1 half, which is equal to 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx. All right, so we differentiated both sides. And now, um, in implicit differentiation, we would solve for dy dx, and we would know that, oh, dy dx is equal to 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which is no surprise. We know the derivative of the square root function. But in this problem, we know something about dy dt. We, we know something about dy dt, and we want to know something about dx dt. So it wouldn't make any sense to divide everything by dx. You can do it, but the information we have is about dy dt, and the information we want to know is about dx dt. So it, the, the sensible thing would be to divide by dt. So I divide by dt, divide by dt, and I'll collect things so I get that uh, dy dt is equal to 1 half x to the minus 1 half dx dt. Now, we can use our information dy dt is equal to 2. Right? So now all we've done is come over here and um, taken what we know that dy dt is equal to 2. And so we use that information right here, replacing saying, oh, dy dt is equivalent equal to 2. And now I can solve for dx dt um, in in this problem then. So this tells me that um, if I were to um, uh, uh, multiply both sides by 2 and then divide by x to the negative 1 halves, I would get that 4 x to the 1 half is equal to dx dt. Why do I want to solve for dt? Well, it comes back to, well, what's the question being asked? I want to know what is dx dt equal to when x is equal to 4. And now I can put that together because I have an equation. Because dx dt when x equals 4 is equal to 4 times 4 to the 1 half, which is equal to, well, the square root of 4 is 2, so this is equal to 8. And now I need to put my units in here, um, but the, um, the units for this 2 were meters per second, and that's the only value with units we have, so this will be meters per second. And that's our answer. Our answer is that um, when uh, x equals 4, the rate at which the x value is changing is 8 meters per second. Now, um, on uh, 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 homework or in an exam, um, I would ask that you write your answer out in a complete sentence. Um, because it's so slow and tedious for me uh, to write it out here, um, I'm going to verbalize the answer. Um, but again, what I would be looking for in an exam is that your final answer would be something like um, the x value is uh, changing or increasing at a rate of 8 meters per second when x equals 4. Uh, but again, I don't want to bore you with me writing that all out, so I'll say it verbally, but remember that um, you will want to um, 
write your answers in complete sentences.